welcome to Beat Around the Barn. I'm really excited for this episode uh, because as a vegan, I can't tell you how many times I have been asked, but where do you get your protein? <laughs> so this episode is very near and dear to mine as well as uh, Ella's heart. As you know, Ella's been vegan for many, many years and she's also been an athlete for over 20 years as well. Uh, so we were invited to come and join uh, a couple of gym owners who are also vegan bodybuilders. Their names are Julian and Yvonne. Uh, they run a gym in West Palm Beach, Florida, so South Florida, and their gym is a uh, plant-based gym, which is very, very unique. They provide nutrition counseling for plant-based diets, as well as um, exercise and activity and so forth that you would find at any other kind of gym. So I'm really, really excited. I want to hear their perspective and I would love for you to come join us as well to hear their perspective on how it is they grow muscle. Where do they get their protein? Uh, because clearly as vegan bodybuilders, they know what they're doing in that sense of growing it and they're utilizing plants to do that more efficiently. So I'm really, really excited. Uh, come join us on this episode. Welcome to Beat Around the Barn, where in this episode we tackle where do vegans get their protein? <laughs> we have here our guests, um, Yvonne and Julian, and we're gonna uh, have you introduce yourselves if you don't mind. We'd love for you to start with um, why you went vegan, how long ago, and also too, what's your fitness background? How does it all come together there? Um, Yvonne, you wanna maybe start and then we'll have sure, Julian sure. go? Yes. Um... Well, we went vegan in 2000, so this is going to be our 21st year of being vegan. Uh, we're, we're former uh, competitive bodybuilders, and we've been bodybuilding for about 30 or 35 years, we're closer to 35 years, and we formed Superfit in 2010. Um, after being vegan for several years, we just wanted to go all out and just have our own, you know, completely vegan fitness gym and be able to teach that to everyone that we work with. Mm -hmm. So Wonderful. And yes. as you all notice, we're here in Superfit yes. as opposed to being on Hogs and Kisses Farm. So they've been gracious enough to invite us here so that we could interview them and also get a look at their gym. Mm -hmm. And then how about you, Julian? Well, I, I would like to add that we, we, we've done the Google check. I think we're the only vegan gym in all of uh -huh. Florida. I believe that we uh -huh. are. I think yeah, so. And, and I'd like to, to, um, to expand on that, you know, why we are we consider ourselves to be the only vegan gym. There's nothing made of leather in here. Uh -huh. We only use products that have not been tested on animals to clean the gym with. Uh -huh. We also recycle like crazy. Mm -hmm. We only advocate for a plant-based diet. That's the only diet that we recommend to people. Uh -huh. So we are a vegan top, bottom, left, right. We encourage people not to wear all leather. All right. You know, <laughs> so yeah, we're 100% we're vegan. Amazing. How has the community yeah. received that? I think really well, and I think because we, we, we're showing by example too, you know, that mm -hmm. it's possible to thrive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. without, you know, harming other sentient beings. And they're seeing that, and it is a great example for them uh -huh. to be in this environment and have that um, support. How, many, how much of your clientele is already vegan versus mm -hmm. not? Oh. What would you say? I would say for myself, for my clientele, I would say at least half. 50 to 60%. Yeah, I would say at least half. Yeah. Um, and then the you rest know, are yeah, vegetarian. The, <laughs> yeah, there's some vegetarians and you know Most they're like I'm trying but yeah. you know we do our best to like like Julian said like lead by example mm -hmm. give them Educate. as much information as we can um, prior to current times we do a lot of uh, outreach we do a lot of animal rights activism yes mm -hmm. so they're they're hearing about things constantly so we're always planting the seeds mm -hmm. we actually post um, events here we've yes. shown uh, films what the hell yep. we've shown uh -huh. speciesism we show we show all types of movies mm -hmm. covering different topics mm -hmm. um, what was the most current game changer? Game changer. Mm -hmm. you know, we do we parties share. here. Of course, where we only serve uh, vegan. You know, vegan yeah, foods I think it gives foods. us an opportunity to introduce them to vegan mm -hmm. products and, and, and um, foods and items that otherwise they would not be exposed to. Cheese is a big one. So <laughs> cheese is huge. <laughs> cheese. Different, <laughs> people, different types of cheese. They can't so stop cheese. They can't it's stop huge. Cheese. Yeah. Do you all have a favorite brand my, or type of? Yeah, cheese. I like the Miyoko's cheese. 
Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I, like yeah. Yeah. I like Miyoko's too, but you know, I've been really getting into um, charcuterie boards, but that are vegan. Oh, wow. And yeah. so I get that, like, wow. yes, artesian cheeses. And there's a brand, if anybody wants to know, brand called Rain. R E I N E. Oh, wow. Go check lovely. it out. Okay. Yes. Lovely. So, yeah, anyhow. <laughs> yeah. Little side note there. Cheese. <laughs> the stuff for clothes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's the hardest part. I don't know about you guys, but I've, I've been vegan now 25 years. Wow. And awesome. things have, are definitely changing quickly, mm -hmm. but still, to this day, I still get the question that I've gotten the whole time I've been vegan, which is <laughs> protein. how to get to protein. <laughs> oh, right? yeah. And really, also, I want to talk about the fitness industry mm -hmm. being very behind. Yes. All this. So yeah. let's, yeah. let's start with how to get your protein. When you get asked that question, what is your response? I ask, a lot of times I'll ask people, depends on who's asking me, like, how much protein do you think that the average person needs? Yes. And they really, so mm -hmm. we can kind of get an idea of like the specifics to try to answer them like completely thoroughly. But most people don't really know how much protein is no. optimal. Mm -hmm. um, just to maintain good health, they think that they need a way more than they need. I, I've. You know, I, I fall into the same thing. Like years ago, I thought I needed way more than I needed. Often we hear yeah. one gram per pound body weight yeah. is yeah. what we get. Uh -huh. You know, that's Which often is, what that's we hear. From uh -huh. that. that's, that's a lot probably of too much for the average person. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. mm -hmm. they don't need that. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. so so what do you prescribe in terms of if somebody says, well, how much protein should I get? Yeah. Then do you guide? They, 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 they're always bulk at it. I'd say five to ten percent of your total calorie intake. That's oh, all. You know. If you're uh -huh. getting adequate calories in uh -huh. for your activity and it's matching your nutrients and mm -hmm. matching your activity level and your requirement for recovery, mm -hmm. if you're getting it in from a colorful base, you're getting all your colors represented, uh -huh. and you're getting adequate calories, you're getting adequate protein. Don't worry about it. I've yet to meet one yes. person with a protein deficiency. <laughs> right. I have right. not met one person. So where do you get your fibers? Right. Where do you get your micronutrients? Yes, indeed. Right. You know? That's, that's the bigger question. question. Right. Right. That's a lot of people with kidney stones, though. Yeah. Right. right. A lot right. of people with kidney stones. Too much protein. Right. Their weight is up and mm -hmm. down, their energy is up and down. Yes. Right. They don't do poops. I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's a problem. Just say, before you ask no, me no. about protein, how many times a day do you do poops? Yeah, where's your fiber? How many times that's per right. week or per month? I'm it's bad. Do poops. Do poops. Do poops. It sounds cuter, right? That. It it's cute. It sounds cute. So how many times do you do poops? I'm going to steal that. Julian, do you actually help people with their meal planning? Yes, I do. Um, you know, I, I, you like to get at first an idea of how it is the structure today because they'll come to me going, oh, I've cleaned up my eating and then I look oh. at it and I think, no, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll evaluate and say, okay, give me three days worth of what you, you can remember what you ate yesterday, you know what you're doing today mm -hmm. and tomorrow and then give it to me the next day and we'll look at it and see, evaluate and see where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, the fat grams are way up there, uh -huh. the carbohydrates are way up there, uh -huh. the protein is usually way up there, it's just too many calories coming from too many different places and not enough fiber mm -hmm. and not enough water. Uh -huh. The forgotten nutrients. No color. No flow. They have no flow. Yeah. Yeah, they're eating dead food, they're mm -hmm. cooking the nutrients completely out of the food. Uh -huh. So I recommend that they stay close to the earth and be very colorful. Oh, I love that. Yeah, keep it real simple. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple. And so, and then do, at first you kind of look more macro, then you go more to the micro. Yes. You said, okay, yeah. fiber because and then That's right. all they know, is the macro. Right. That's, yes. you know, yeah. pretty much, as right. soon as you mentioned right. vitamins, right. minerals, right. phytonutrients, right. they have no clue. Right. <laughs> you know? yes. yes. So I start with the big number and then sure. I kind of break it down. Mm -hmm. Sure. Break it down. Yes. And you know, it astounds me a lot that people who actually ask the question, where do you get your protein, they have no clue. Even if they eat meat, how much protein they eat, right. they actually have zero yeah. clue yes. as to that even protein are in plants or things like that. So they ask the question not knowing. And I think a lot of it has to do with our marketing or the way we're brought up. Yeah, we're made of carbohydrates. And, yes. yes. You say you uh -huh. get protein from this plant source or that, but you're like, but it has too many carbs. Right. right. You're very right. afraid of, afraid of yes, carbs. Yes, very afraid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess that's what diet fads, right? They kind of come in and start splicing up people's yeah. understanding of nutrition, I would yes. say. Yes, I, I sure. once did a paper on that. I mean, there's uh -huh. literally a diet from Atkins to Zoom for uh -huh. every letter of the alphabet, practically. <laughs> and it's ridiculous. Uh -huh. You know, and I look at it and think, why are you making something so simple, so complicated? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. You know, it's really simple. Right. You, know, you don't even barely even have to cook if you don't want to. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> 
you know, they have to. Because right? I get that, you know, oh, I'm going to be in the kitchen all yeah. day long. Uh, I can't go vegan. Stuff. I can't cook tofu. Yeah. Right, like, right. Oh <laughs> You're making it too complicated. Keep it simple. You don't have to cook just don't blueberries like or strawberries. Yeah. Right, you're right. I just can't. Yeah. Eat. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we're talking about two, two things here also. Mm -hmm. You've got just the people that want to be healthy, yes. right? And are mostly concerned with longevity and quality of life. And then we've got people that are coming in, I'm sure, to your gym saying, I want to build muscle. Yes. Mm -hmm. How do you treat those two people differently? Do you find one is uh, you know, asking you more often than the other? Where, where are you there? Mm -hmm. Where you want to let me look at that? Yeah, you could. I mean, I think with with a plant-based diet, with a good wholesome plant-based diet, they kind of overlap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times yeah. the training has a lot to do with it also, and you know, their starting point, and all those things, like if someone is really overweight, or they're underweight, mm -hmm. or the training experience that they had. But um, Julian can probably get into more of the But well, well, I was gonna say that, you know, a lot of the times, like we have, a, I'll give you a perfect example, a young lady who's working with us now, and she lost a tremendous amount of weight, I think 30 pounds, and she was concerned about losing muscle and size. And what happened is that she dropped the body fat and started training in an efficient and effective way, the lean mass number went up. Now her requirement for recovery calories went up as well too, so everything had to move up with that, the protein, mm -hmm. grams, the carbohydrates, mm -hmm. and a little bit more fats in the diet. Right. So we had to move everything up, not just one source, mm -hmm. right. you know, because mm -hmm. she needed that extra energy, that, uh, that extra glycogen storage to get through those tough workouts, yeah, just which support. stimulates yeah, the yeah. muscle growth. Right. And in turn, yeah. you need the recovery calories. So we want to right. explain that to her. She goes, mm -hmm. oh, I don't need that much more. Mm -hmm. I just need to bring everything up mm -hmm. and uh -huh. feed the muscle. Right. It's really simple. Feed the muscle. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so then is this also too why we're seeing such a trend around uh, pro sport, sport players, Olympians yes. and so forth, looking towards plant-based diets Absolutely. because of the way it works more efficiently for the muscle Absolutely. and recovery. And yes. it's alkalinizing and you know, uh -huh. they, they tend to be very, they have a lot of inflammation issues. Yeah, uh -huh. you know? So you yeah, have that right. anti-inflammatory effect and so they recover faster, mm -hmm. they're able to work up with high intensities and recover quicker from it mm -hmm. and they're less injured. Uh -huh. They don't have more frequently with the same with intensity. The Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And can you get into the science just a little bit behind that? Yeah. Uh, in terms of the inflammation? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know, the body naturally is more to the alkaline side. So when we, when we look at disease, you know, we're looking at a body that's probably really acidic. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you work out, there will be a certain level of acid that, uh, in the body that generates as the body's recovering. So you want to temper that down mm -hmm. and alkalinize the body and help it to recover. Mm -hmm. Most people, though, don't even think about what's going on post-workout at all. They're running around doing errands. They're not thinking about taking care of recovery. To me, mm -hmm. recovery is number one. Mm -hmm. How you mm -hmm. sleep, how you rest, mm -hmm. how, you, how you feed the body. Mm -hmm. but, but most folks don't think about it in terms of that. They think, I gotta work out hard. Mm -hmm. Not smarter. Right. You gotta work more out sweat smarter. means I get yes. more, right? Yeah. Yeah, they think, oh, I worked up a sweat, I'm working out hard. Uh, no. Right. <laughs> exactly. I, I don't think you can progress using the same. I'm, I'm, I'm a progressive type trainer. I, I think you've always stood. Mm -hmm. If you're using the same weight and not challenging that muscle mm -hmm. to have to change and adapt, Yes. You're not going to get the results. Mm -hmm. You have to challenge the body and then feed it adequately to recover from the challenges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I, I kind of have my mood boosting workouts, right, and then my effective workouts. <laughs> right, they're not necessarily yes. the same yes. thing. Very so true. I have my you know kickboxing classes mm -hmm. where I go and I sweat hard, my heart beats, and I'm doing lots of push-ups and calisthenics. But it's something I do all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't see many physical results from that. Yeah. When you can I know consider it more like exercise and recycling training. Right. Right. Yeah. It's great cardiovascular yeah. for my cardiovascular health, but if I want to see actual changes, I gotta lift weights. Mm -hmm. Right. The muscle has to be under stress. enough stress, yeah. Yes. enough overload. Yeah, right. for sure. Enough time yeah. under tension. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, and on that note too, because I um, I had been starting to look into a little bit of weightlifting and powerlifting a few years ago. And I was just realizing um, some of the data behind with weightlifting, how much it helps with women above 50 as well in osteoporosis. Yes, well, that's Because the more tension and building mm -hmm. up the muscle, it helps to pull on the skeleton, mm -hmm. yes. I think is what it right, and it mm -hmm. helps with. Do you all um, counsel a lot of, or, or coach a lot of folks above 50 Ooh. as well? Or? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I <laughs> heard the yeah, so. yeah, in the uh -huh. 70s. Yeah. Ah, the 70s. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. 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 like that, like yeah. 40s, 50s, and up. And we'll so. train circles around the younger people. Yes. Yeah. That's that's so true. It's amazing, that the energy. So uh -huh. you know? And they are usually a little more open to a plant based 
type uh -huh. of diet. Mm -hmm. They're usually more open to it. They feel better, the body yeah. feels lighter, they digest better, they don't have to worry about reflux. Mm -hmm. They're poops. on less medication, more poops. More poops. <laughs> more poops. <laughs> they feel better. <laughs> when you're a little older, yeah. up there in years, you, exactly. you gotta have flow. You gotta have flow. That's better. right. When you're younger, you can handle less poops. But right. when you're older, you need more poops. I think so. <laughs> you, you know, I made the analogy the other day of being late for work. You know, uh -huh. being backed up as, as being late for work in traffic. Oh, wow. You're supposed to be there at 9 o'clock. It's 9.05 and you can't move <laughs> because you're back to the frustration and the stress level. I mean, it has a, a biochemical effect on your body. Stress uh -huh. will kill you. Right. Yeah. To me, that's stressful. <laughs> yeah, you can't even think right. Yeah, you're right. right. Everything's right. cloudy. Backed up. You're backed Did up. you poop today? Yeah. You're not talking right. Did you poop today? Yeah, your body language shows me you didn't go. Yeah, didn't I don't go. think so. I'm so, so on this note of poop, since it seems to be a very it's good topic, it's funny. It's, it's important and it's fun. Because, yes, exactly. <laughs> Um, so, on average, then, is it the case that it's supposed to be a few times per day, or is it Ooh. after each meal? Like, what is <laughs> well, the right not, sweet spot of food? It's pooping? a good topic. It's, it's a good topic because to me, digestion begins at the end. Uh -huh. You know, to me, uh -huh. you know, that's my humble view. I think it should go at least three times a day. Uh -huh. It should have at least three good, and I think National Institute of Health also recommends awesome. mm -hmm. three mm -hmm. good solid movements, and they even tell you what the length. Of the stool should really? be really yeah, color think too? something like yes. yes. Color and length. Yes. Wow. I believe it's four to five inches. Uh -huh. uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, don't quote wow. me on that. But I'm, I'm <laughs> almost sure. Yeah, that's the tell you. Most people wow. they'll go and they'll do pellets. Right, know? right. But because they're so dehydrated, the body's rehydrated, uh -huh. pulling it from the stool to try to rehydrate. Right. So yeah, so flow is important. Uh -huh. You have to drink a lot of water and you have to eat your fiber. Sure. Yeah. So Ellen and I speak a lot about poop just because also <laughs> we've been talking about animal poop as well. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. we have oh, rabbits. Yeah. We have, we okay. Cleaning up goat poop and <laughs> the pig poop. poop. And all this, yeah. Dog right. yeah. So, <laughs> it is, but it's so amazing because I noticed recently we had some issues with one of our bunnies. Anyhow, the poop, it was extremely dehydrated, which uh -huh. gave her some GI issues, some gastrointestinal issues. So the more hydrated, the rounder and uh -huh. cooler, okay. and the color was different. It looked different. This. And yep. they eat and then they poop. That's right. right. Absolutely. They, have, mm -hmm. they so constantly they keeping it in the flow. Yeah. It's very important you yes. know, for all animals, right? right. But definitely for buddies, for mm -hmm. sure. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. And first, with the intestines as long as they are, exactly. we need that. Yeah, we can't have backup in yeah, a situation like that. Right, inside's yeah. clean. That's yeah. right. Yeah. No. yeah. What about supplements? Okay. Mm. Let's talk, let's yes. Chat about supplements. That's good. What do you think it's about supplements. protein supplements? Uh -huh. I mean, you know, it's like I, I'm in two minds about it because mm -hmm. I think if you're a person who trains regularly, mm -hmm. you you definitely have a higher requirement. For nutrients that can get into the system very quickly and help you again that word recovery yeah. mm -hmm. because that's the to me that's number one mm -hmm. if i have a professional athlete that i'm working with i recommend them mm -hmm. absolutely because they're depleting their bodies are constantly and then having to replenish uh -huh. so i think it's it's helpful for the athlete uh -huh. absolutely for the average person who is on the couch mm -hmm. most of the time, <laughs> i don't know how beneficial maybe a good multivitamin uh -huh. might be good a liquid multivitamin mm -hmm. to me those absorb better mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but um but for the most part, if you're eating a well-balanced diet, mm -hmm. I think you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But most people aren't. Yeah. So most people need a multiplier. Right. <laughs> so that brought, that brought it around full circle. That brought it full circle. <laughs> I, think, I think people watching might say, okay, well, how do I know how much protein I'm supposed to eat? Right. Do I need to count my macros? Mm -hmm. Do I need to count uh, you know, how many calories and how many grams of protein and fat to be healthy? Or can I do it kind of more intuitively? What are your thoughts on that? What would you tell that person who's like, I'm lost? Well, I mean, it, again, it, it would depend if it's the person who's an elite athlete or are we talking about just average yeah, person? Yeah, just kind of the, the listener that might be listening okay. that's vegan or vegan curious and right. wanting to move in that direction, wants to be just fit and healthy. And yes, I, I don't know many people that don't want a nice tone, yeah. Yeah. you know, which means you have to gain lean muscle in order to tone right. your body. Right, right, right. So that, that person. I think 12, 12 to 15 calories, k calories per kilogram body weight would be adequate. I think so. When you look at it, I mean, we're talking about maybe for most people a 1,500 to 2,000 calorie diet a day. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I mean, that's a, if you're eating clean, that's a lot. That's a, lot, a lot of food. Mm -hmm. If you're eating clean, that's not much if you're eating pasta all day. Uh, right. That's a plate of pasta and some right. sauce on top. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, so right. if you're eating um, clean, close to the earth, dirty foods, that's a lot of food. You could be full, really mm -hmm. full on 12 to 15 calories per kilogram body weight. Mm -hmm. 
per you know, kilogram plot. No, I know what okay. vegans, I mean, pure vegans, it's a, um, I believe the split is 80, 80, 10, 10, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. is how they usually split it, uh, mm -hmm. if pure vegan. Mm -hmm. I find that to be a little tough for most people, so mm -hmm. I usually yeah. tell them 50 to 60 percent for carbohydrates from a mixed okay. source, uh -huh. fibrous, complex, and mm -hmm. simple, you know, mm -hmm. make sure you get your fruits in there, mm -hmm. because they have a bunch of vitamins and minerals in mm -hmm. there. And, um, and then uh, maybe about 10 to 15 percent from protein and the balance from fats. Wow. And be mm -hmm. careful with the fats and make sure they're not processed. Mm -hmm. Make sure they come from whole foods. Mm -hmm. Like have a car. Not oil. Mm -hmm. No oils. I do not recommend oils. Really? That's my personal. Bit. No, okay. That's my personal. <laughs> Ideally. Ideally. Right. I think we've got ideal. Wow. And then we've got. Yeah, that's my personal view. Yes. Right. Yes. My personal view so on. Interesting. Yeah. Anytime you refine a nutrient out of uh -huh. a food, uh -huh. I think we're Strip talking yeah. problems. Yeah. Right. Especially when you're just taking out fat. Yes. Yes, right. No right, right, right. Nothing yeah. else but it. Mm. I agree. So I then agree. does um, like an avocado oil or an olive oil fall into this? Mm -hmm. Right? So Eat the so avocado oil. Because avocado. you're extreme. Uh, uh, right. Eat the olive. Yeah. Don't refine it. Right. Yeah. Huh. You're like, damn. Yeah, I know, right? Because yeah, I do I, a little bit of oil I when I put oil, things in the pan. But it's yeah. not ideal. No, uh -huh. yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. just a little bit. I mean, you know. Yeah, a little bit. We have folks who. I mean, they will load People it think up. that that's, they still, they think it's healthy. Yeah. 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 They have a spoon at a time. Right. 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 They will load it, load it. They right. probably want to like not eat carbs. They'll eat like all these, you know, very high fats. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Animal sure. fats. Yeah. And, right. Know, even from the plant based, you don't really, really want to no. get your calories in like that from uh -huh. oils. You know, right. You want to be from the whole food. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some issues also, I think, with some people are nuts. This, uh -huh. I, right. I talk to some vegans who are like, I don't eat nuts either. I do. I mean, I just make sure that I masticate. Well, yeah. well, I'll soak them. Soak them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, sure. I mean, there's ways around it if uh -huh. you want a little bit more variety. Mm -hmm. Right. Sure, sure. Can we talk CrossFit and paleo for a moment? <laughs> oh, oh, my. oh, my. I, when oh my. I first talked to Gregor, I was on the holistic holiday at Sea Crew. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Super fun. Anne was with me. Yes. I was doing a book signing. Mm -hmm. nice. And he was speaking, and I ran up there at the end because I'd never met him before, and I gave him a book. I'd written it and everything. And he said to me, "You gotta help me. We gotta, we gotta get these CrossFitters. We gotta get the Paleo people on board. What is going on? Because that is like such a strong, huge uh, force in the fitness industry. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they're all mm -hmm. about Paleo still, like yeah. keto yeah. and yeah. Paleo. Yeah, yeah." yeah. What? yeah. Well, we're seeing a trend now. We're seeing more and more vegan and plant-based um, mm -hmm. CrossFitters, uh -huh. yeah. and they are so kicking butt, uh -huh. and people are taking note. Right and yeah. I think isn't the, the lady where is she from? Um, what, um, uh, what's her name? Um, Glom's daughter or something? She's one of the high-performing CrossFit athletes. Yeah. Uh, blonde, and she's from like Norway or Sweden. Okay. Anyway, she switched over to a. I remember seeing her. Yes, for her. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Now I've been seeing yeah, more you do of see that. Less inflamed. Yes. They can work out that, harder that's with more intensity. Yeah, more I would think right. that that would be even more important. Ideal, right? You know, because it's it's ideal. the level of intensity. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's back to back. Like that's. You yes. know, uh, I, I did a CrossFit certification when it was, you know, it was like early two thousand eight. Yeah. Went out of the state. Did it? I just did like level one, but there was a lot of things that I like about it and a lot of things that I don't. Mm -hmm. And one of them was, of course, the diet. And at that time, they were uh, pushing the zone diet. Zone diet. Oh. So it was, zone. yeah, oh, they wow. were like, so it was still a lot of fat. Uh -huh. and it was, of course, lots of protein, mm -hmm. not plant based at all. Uh -huh. So, you know, I was like, okay, I like this, but I'm mm -hmm. not, the, the nutrition is, there's no way that's for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I was already vegan, right. you know, so that, that didn't work for me. but. Um, and even with the training philosophy, like I just don't know if that's for everybody. Mm -hmm. Right. And like just some other things, mm -hmm. uh, like it's especially it's not if they're eating yeah. acid forming yeah. foods. Uh -huh. You know that it, it, logic. My logical mind can't wrap around it. Mm -hmm. Why would you eat acid forming foods when mm -hmm. you should be eating alkalinizing foods? I think that's why a lot of the to top athletes like they hurt. Yeah. Okay. And they do. They, they do get a lot of yeah. Yeah. Because it's gonna it's gonna interfere with your recovery. Mm -hmm. you know? It must. Mm -hmm. It can't be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It can't be good with all that um, acid buildup that you get from just the level of intensity, mm -hmm. and then you're eating it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah you know, there's it, no way. It, it can't be good. I don't know how you can I recover. Can't see it. Sure. I mean, it's it's mm -hmm. tough when mm -hmm. you're training that hard and that frequently yeah. to be like one of the elite. You know, making it to the right. the finals and you know exactly. the CrossFit Games. Yes. You know? I mean, Tom Brady, for God's sakes, how many times has he carried any team that he's been on out to the 
mm. the Super Bowl. It's insane, and he's over forty and eating plant based. Right. You know, so, so we should talk about that mm -hmm. longevity. Longevity, yes. right? Because yes, that's the other side of it. Sure, you know? sure. You know, um, it, it, right. Collagen was a thing that was, has become popular now. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Collagen. There are so many good plant based. Well, well, I can't really call it collagen. You have to call it nutrients ingredients for building uh -huh. is a uh -huh. better way to uh -huh. describe it yeah. uh -huh. that right there should be a game changer for us okay it and should be explain how or why uh, because uh, most of the collagen on the market now is like from what was it bone broth and you know they're uh, coming from an animal base okay. but those that that source it, it's you, it's not necessary to get that. You want the building block nutrients. Uh, I see. Yeah. So you your know? body can make its own. Yeah. So mm -hmm. your body can manufacture on its own. Let your body do the work. Uh -huh. You know? Don't and take so somebody else's The production. Got it. That collagen okay. doesn't belong to you. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. that, yes. Right. That collagen belongs to, to Just someone. Just like the <laughs> Someone's flesh doesn't uh -huh. belong. Right. Doesn't belong to you. Uh -huh. Build your own. Make your own. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> animals make their own protein. We don't yeah. take the protein from the animal. Right. We make our own protein. Make right. your own. Yes. And they right. get it from eating plants. Exactly. Yes. Just it's eat the damn thing. Right. <laughs> ah. Right. Ah. Ah. You take the middle person out of it. Right. right. Go directly to the source. Yes. Yes. To me, you know what it is though? I guess it's like me trying to fix my car. I have no clue. Uh, I'll pick up, I'll open the hood and I'll go, okay. <laughs> right, I guess I'll be walking. <laughs> you know? right. So it's, 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 for some folks, I guess that's, that's how nutrition is. For yeah, sure. Like, sure. You get, you've been pulling all these different directions. Exactly. You don't know what to believe. Right. Yeah. It's so hard. Low carb, yeah. high carb, this yeah. carb. You got, mm -hmm. right, what do I do? How many calories? <laughs> yeah, and you, you know what? See where you get frustrated. Yes. Because people, be people frustrated. want results very quickly. Yes. Right. You know, they want results quick. That's why yeah. these you know, drop your calories all the way down. Mm. Don't eat any mm. carbohydrates. Right. Just eat a stick of butter and the keto, dip it in your coffee. And like, <laughs> sounds delicious, right? Sounds delicious. Last time I checked, <laughs> when your body was into ketosis, that's you were sickness. having a problem. Yeah. You know, it's, I, I, yeah. didn't, I never heard of striving to get your body to go yeah. into ketosis, other than for when we were bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. And we had actually, for the last few weeks before preparation, before yeah, or the even the last week, like the last few days, just week. to pull water out. Mm -hmm. And you don't do it to get lean. You work harder and you manipulate your yeah. calories and stuff. And you pee like crazy because your body's trying to get rid of the ketones. Right. So uh, you pee yeah. like the crazy. was just the last few days you know? before. Mm -hmm. But so it was dry out. It wasn't like a way of life. Right. Like, oh, we're always going right. to just eat butter. I could see myself getting very ill. Yeah, well, it's ketosis is a state of. You know, people that are ill, people mm -hmm. that have yes. serious sicknesses and diseases, yeah. mm -hmm. they're they're in ketosis. Yeah. Uh -huh. But this is people want it; they want to be that. I've never uh -huh. heard of it. Just for the visible, find to be very dangerous. Sure. Yeah. Long term, uh -huh. that is that cannot be good for your body. Sure. Yeah. And what about um, actual so vegan bodybuilders, yeah. right? There's our bodybuilding world. There's a lot more vegans coming, yeah. or want people wanting to compete on a plant based diet or mm -hmm. becoming vegan. That's right? how I meant. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You all were yeah. judges. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 First ever, right? Uh -huh. Vegan bodybuilding. 100% vegan bodybuilding. <laughs> that was great. Uh -huh. yeah. that, that was we great. That was cool. That season. was great. Yeah, that was really cool. And so how many people were enrolled in that? In, in well, that competition? There, there was a lot. Because there was a lot of categories too. There was like okay, fitness okay. and figure and physique and bodybuilding. Very, very good. For men and women. Well, okay. So there was a lot of, sure. there was a lot of categories. And are you Could be a million people. I don't know. <laughs> 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 and are you all finding that um, more more people in the v or in the bodybuilding world are wanting to use it for their own for, for the results that they're seeing? You know, I think so. they get leaner, yeah. they're a little strong, right? Uh -huh. Like I mean, you know, you can eat more. Right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know if you all ever heard of the site, but it was called the um, uh, what's it called? Um, where you would. Um, what was it called? Was it recent? Yeah. Well, well, here was the gist of the diet that you you got to eat foods that have a negative calorie effect. It, meaning ah, that yes. that you actually your body actually have to burn more calories than oh, the, yeah. the actual uh -huh. item was burned. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, this is a name for the diet. Right. Uh, is it like celery? One of them. Yes. Right. Yeah. Negative calories. Same thing yeah. yeah. that your body requires. Apples was on the list because wow. your body requires I think uh, something like two or three percent more calories than the apples worth oh, to right. actually wow. break it down to, break it to get out of the nutrients. Yeah. Yeah. So. So, most of my clients still come to me saying, my trainer said, <laughs> my trainer said I can't get results without animal protein. Mm -hmm. And that is still so pervasive. I mean, yeah. why in the world is the fitness industry not catching up to the science? Because this is all 
science and it's yeah. proven and what is going on? Why, why are we so stuck, the fitness industry? Ooh, that's, that's a hard question to answer. <laughs> I want the answer. I know, I know. That's why you're here. I know, I have to know everything. I'm vegan, I have to know everything. I'm the vegan of this community. The super fit vegan. Super fit vegan, and I have to know all the answers. I'll do my best. Um, I find that, like, as far as, like, clients that we work with, mm -hmm. like, when, I remember when we first started, um, I did have a few clients say, like, oh, my friend works out at the gym next door, and I told her that I, that I work out here with you, and that, you know, I changed my diet to a plant-based diet, and she, she said, like, oh, my God, that's terrible. You're going to get sick, you mm -hmm. know. Meanwhile, that was, like, 10 years ago, and she's still alive and thriving. And, everything, so. and so am I, 21 years later, having died of protein deficiency. Yeah, I look a little amazing, and I know. But anyway, um, I, I find people ask that less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I think they're more accepting of it because I think they do see people in the media. Mm -hmm. They see athletes are a huge, um, a huge deal. Like people really great, great look up to them. They're great. Yeah, they're great influencers. So mm -hmm. I think with all the documentaries that have come yeah. out, yeah. Yes. you know, the education. awareness, the mm -hmm. education, you know, um, social media, people can, you know. It's it's cool because you more like I'll, I'll, I like different like YouTubers and some of them they surprise me and they are they are they're plant based mm -hmm. or they're vegan and they actually mention things about kindness to animals too oh, so it's really nice. cool like you'll see it more and more like I, yes. I see it on the connecting the dots yeah so I think right. it's just more influence and people if enough people start to change people follow along mm -hmm. you know it's hard for people to be leaders and, and as a matter of fact when we first incorporated and you know our name doesn't imply that we're vegan but our website does it's uh -huh. superfitvegan.com yes. yes so um you're like oh no you I mean like that should we have that because mm -hmm. then people are going to look at it and like well i'm not vegan i'm not going to go there right you know or like you're going to like push this down right you're going to force your views on me mm -hmm. like you can't force anybody to do anything first of all mm -hmm. and of course i'm going to advocate for the right thing oh, I, yeah, we yeah, feel like right thing. you know just like i would say like you need to exercise in this way this is how you do that exercise because I know that's the best way. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you the best way to eat uh -huh. from what we know, from what's current. I'm not going to tell so, you to poison your body and become yeah, sick and then end up on medication I mean, I think for the rest that of your life. Uh -huh. That's what you're asking to me do. to tell you, to end up on medication for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to right. tell you this is what you need to do to become more healthy, yeah. for longevity, mm -hmm. you know, for better quality of life. And as far as the science goes, I mean, last time I checked, I mean, a lot of folks are having issues with science in this country. Uh -huh. <laughs> you yes. know, yes. It's, it's like science has to, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, what is up with that? Uh, that yes. is a weird dynamic. To it's well, the science is proof. And that's the thing that um, we had a, an episode where we had on a doctorate of nutrition. And we talked mm -hmm. about why are there so many different types of scientific studies. Yeah. And sorry, I did air quotes there. But right. in some cases, it depends on who funds them, right. the companies, yes. right? And then there's you can find a report this, to, to tell you anything. You, right, exactly. You know? And you, if you get data, a lot of times you can use it to a particular mm -hmm. advantage yes. or inference of the way you want to spin it right. and so forth. So All the har com companies that yeah. harm have evidence, uh -huh. yeah. proof right. that, that right. it's okay. Like, like, that's this poison good. is not right. poison. <laughs> right. You heard wrong. That's not poison. Right. That's good for you. It's good for you. Smoke Absolutely. another one. Right. It's fine. <laughs> right. You know, so right. It, it's like that. With, yes. You know, yeah. like you said, like mm -hmm. science. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You have to use some Definitely. level of like common sense mm -hmm. and you know uh, and, and research for yourself. Exactly. That's another thing that's helping. Okay. That you can look up anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll, 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 anything. I'll end with this. This I know. When the people who do the two-week challenge of, you know, stay away from the animal basis, stay more cl closer to the earth, stay more plant-based, mm -hmm. they feel so much better. They actually have now a base of reference. Right. Uh -huh. They never felt good before. Now they feel yeah, good, uh -huh. and now they don't want to go back to that uh -huh. sluggish, low-energy <laughs> feeling. So that right there to me is evidence. we mm -hmm. got to get them okay for this 21 days. Yeah, just try it. Mm -hmm. Just try it. Just mm -hmm. see. Stick it out. Right. Stick it out for the 21 days. Sure. Let's see how you feel at the end yes. of the 21 days. And usually that in itself right. is a good experiment for uh -huh. them, a controlled experiment with you, the individual, in Absolutely. control. Absolutely. Yes. You see? Yeah. So. yeah. Actually, I think this year in particular, Veganuary, yes. had its highest enrollment ever. ever. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. They, they actually interviewed us for, for yeah. a, a TV spot because of it. On our, on our local yeah, news. Local oh, news. how cool. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> they interviewed Julian for Veganuary. Okay, yes. yes. Cool. yes. Oh, <laughs> perfect. Like, that's the first gym. time. Yeah, that's yes. pretty cool. That's the first time that's happened. Exactly. Yeah. New at six, an old trend is rebounding big time at a West Palm Beach business. It's called Veganuary. 
As WPTV News Channel 5's Sabira Rayford shows you, Florida's only vegan gym says this new year trend is helping them grow. Don't be fooled. I'm pivoting, all right? This isn't your average gym. We are proud to say the only vegan gym in all of Florida. It's called Superfit. Julian Gibson, Surrett, and his wife Yvonne have owned the West Palm Beach gym for 11 years. There's nothing made of leather in here. We only use products that have not been tested on animals. I mean, we're hardcore vegan. We only recommend a plant-based diet. Over the years, they built a community around the plant-based lifestyle, though the COVID-19 pandemic made it more difficult to make ends meet. You never knew where your next dollar was going to come from because, you, you know, you didn't know if you were going to be able to open your doors. When they reopened, Julian says they cut down on their class sizes. Now a popular trend called Veganuary is giving their plant-based business new life. There's a lot of pluses. Julian says the pandemic has caused a lot of new customers to reevaluate their health choices. In this age of, you know, you don't know what virus is out there, you want to keep your immune system really well boosted. So those types of foods that are close to the earth, we're finding that they, 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 they do the job and they do it well and they keep you full and satisfied. That's another side of it. And it's helping to keep this mom and pop gym thriving. Reporting in West Palm Beach. Start the, the, the new year cleansing. Sabir Rayford, WPTV News Channel 5. What a great conversation with Julian and Yvonne. Ellen and I were so honored to be invited to Superfit uh, Gym. You can find them at superfitvegan.com. And even though we didn't discuss it during the episode, Yvonne and Julian run their own animal sanctuary, a micro sanctuary called uh, Dharma Bears Rescue. So we'll make sure we put all of the links in the notes. Um, Hogs and Kisses truly thanks you, Yvonne and uh, Julian, for all the work you do for animal welfare as well as your fitness focus. Okay, hopefully you all enjoyed today's episode and uh, we wish you a diet full of fiber and lots of poops.